Thank you, Gunther. Ihre Summen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so, yes. Uh, uh, here is uh, Gunther Wagner, who speaks a little bit Slovenian. Malo. Yes, Malo. Uh, due to uh, his wife, Michaela Paulicho, who is Slovenian. And she's here today, and she's also an evolutionary biologist on Vienna University. And uh, so uh, there are a couple of you here also, you know, that the chair is waiting for you. That's the reason. No, that's not the reason, but that's improvised reason why this place <coughs> is empty. The, the main reason is that, uh, uh, how to say, my... Uh, my dear peer, uh, um, uh, got sick. Who was uh, uh, who, he was? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the the trigger uh, for this conversation. And later, I met uh, Gunther, uh, and I found out that. Uh, both, so the, the one that is not sitting here, here is David Haig, uh, professor at Harvard uh, on evolutionary biology, and uh, Gunther just finished his 30 years ten tenure on Yale. Yeah. <coughs> yes, okay. Uh, so uh, they are both evolutionary biologists which nobody apart from, oh, many of you understand what is this. Anyway, I'll come to that point. Uh, so, uh, the reason uh, to those two men came, uh, you know, why, why I got interested was the title of their books. Uh, David wrote, a book from Darwin to Derrida. I didn't know nothing about David. And I, when I, as philosopher, found out what is Derrida doing with Darwin? Okay, they both, I, 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 I see that, that there is a fact, you know, that all books are from two. Right. Yeah, D, D, right. Yeah, D, D, yes. Uh, uh, it's not yours. So no. when I saw, you know, the Rida, let's check it and how this uh, relationship started. It, it, it's important. Uh, it will it will pop up later in our discussion. And a, 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 a reason for you is uh, quite obvious. You know, uh, uh, evolutionary innovation. Uh, genes, okay. I knew a little bit about that. We'll talk about that. Homology, hmm, okay. <laughs> Let's see what can we do with homology. But innovation is something that, that is, uh, how to say? Innovation is something that everybody understands even if he or she is not biologist. And that's the reason for conversations, or conversation tonight and, and the main trigger for hopefully next uh, talks here. Namely, uh, what can pop out out of a meeting of, uh, of a conversation of two frequently opposing sciences, natural sciences in this case, biology, and on the other side, human sciences. And let's say, we, we, we all talk in social scientists, in philosophy, innovation. What is this innovation? We all talk about sustainability. Uh, so, and many other topics that especially evolutionary biology covers. And, uh, uh, so the idea is to check whether something productive 
for both sides. Majority of you here today are not biologists. Thanks, Michaela, for bringing your lab here. So not all of you are, are uh, from human sciences. Uh, majority of the rest, apart from one who will, you will uh, meet later, uh, are from social sciences, or at least are not really familiar with, uh, with natural sciences. So uh, what can we learn? Obviously, you know, uh, uh, biologists are learning from, from uh, philosophy, from, uh, from uh, social. social sciences in wider sense. Uh, but uh, I don't see much of this, at least not in Slovenia, for uh, in the other direction. So that was the main reason. And uh, there, there are going uh, So I believe that the broader perspective will help us all in this respect to understand the concept that we are dealing every day, nothing new will come because we are old enough and we know that we, we cannot really grasp much more different. I mean, we have certain platforms. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. There are, there are exceptions <laughs> sitting here, you know, okay. <laughs> uh, so let's see this. Uh, so uh, if there are any, uh, of course, questions, whatever, interruptions, uh, Gunther is coming from Vienna. He is, he understands interruptions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they are welcomed. Uh, so let's start with this uh, critical question uh, that binds all of us, if I can say, say so. And we are all interested in what is sustainable? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is, I mean, every living creature is about sustainability, I believe, yeah. even if it cannot reflect it. Mm. But humans, we are reflecting this very much, mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, we are talking about sustainability of companies, of s sustainability of our, our lives, our, our, our families going to survive. Uh, and uh, well, evolutionary bi biology is really uh, uh, dealing with that. And, y and uh, what is your perspective on this topic? Uh, Okay, I, I think when we talk about sustainability in biology, uh, we have to start at the beginning and realize that life is actually not supposed to be here, right? Uh, living organisms can only exist in constant flow of energy. Uh, there's no natural law in physics or chemistry that prescribes that law, life can exist or should exist. So, so basically life only exists while constantly dying. And, uh, and sustainability is, uh, uh, becomes possible sort of at three different levels. At the one hand, at the individual level, uh, by uh, regeneration. So we lose all kinds of cells and molecules uh, uh, constantly just by you know, the laws of, of thermodynamics. It, things fall apart. Um, that is by reproduction, so that the individual creates a new individual. And I think the level that you're most interested in is uh, in the long run, you know, mm -hmm. the evolutionary. So sustainability um, in life uh, is probably most uh, dependent on the ability of species to evolve, to change, not by maintaining, uh, you know, one state of ideal uh, equilibrium, because equilibrium is the death of, of, of life. So evolvability is, is probably the, the key concept. Uh, the question of sustainability then reduces to the question what makes organisms evolvable? And that's actually a very, um, a very active field of research and, and don't have 
very um, definite answers, uh, and, but it is a central one because what we learned when we tried to use um, evolutionary principles to um, realize them in artificial systems, for instance, it's possible to use the, uh, uh, the basic principle of evolution of variation and selection, uh, so, so survival of the, of the best or the fittest or whatever, um, in computer science, for instance, or in engineering, right? Um, it's actually very successful, but what we learned there is that uh, that's only possible for particular systems. So a normal computer program like a C or whatever Python program, and you vary it by you know exchanging simple you know letters in the in the source code. That is not ev evolvable. It will never produce anything that is uh, better than what you have done. Most of them, I mean, it will everything will go down the drain. And, but people realize that if you structure the code in a way that you know, whole meaningful parts can be replaced and we avoid uh, kind of changes that are, um, that are most likely to uh, destroy the, the program, they can evolve. They can actually evolve much better uh, uh, solutions to computational problems than uh, um, uh, even an experienced uh, programmer can. So in these engineering contexts, uh, biologists learn that you know, even though we live, you know, work on evolved and successful organisms, it's not self-evident that that should work. You know, the random variation and, and selection is not, is not guaranteed to work. It only works under certain conditions. Um, and we learned this, as I said, in these artificial systems because we can manipulate them, while we biologists usually only deal with the, with the winners of the evolutionary process. So the question of how they got there, you know, we never ask that. It never comes up as a question. So it was one of the major insights that uh, came from, uh, from, from computer science and engineering uh, that led us to the realization that evolvability is not self-evident, it's not necessary, and really is sort of the key for, um, for the sustained existence of life. But uh, I, I didn't want to go to that direction, but you, know, yeah, you, you but opened it, so yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you, 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 uh, you opened the question of whether uh, Evolvability, like we, you know, we know, uh, with living creatures, is possible with artific artificial intelligence. Let's say, with no uh, phenotypes, is it possible? Well, the, uh, well I mean, even, even the artificial systems have phenotypes, okay, right? Yeah. They do stuff, they do and stuff. what they are doing in, in an artificial context is determines of whether they survive or not, right? So, so they have a sort of some kind of a code, a genome, a program or whatever, and uh, that program gets executed, like in development, and then they do stuff that the programmer wants to happen, and that determines the uh, survival of, of, of that program, right? So it, it is quite uh, similar to and really, uh, um, you know, fundamentally the same kind of process as we believe is happening in, in biological evolution. Okay, uh, let's not go in that direction. <laughs> you are the boss. Too, <laughs> too much because it's it's intriguing. But, but, but basically, one can say that you as bio biologists don't you don't you f you can foresee in foreseeable time that artificial intelligence is going to develop independently of. Uh, engineers or not it's it's That's it's possible it's, it's possible. possible okay okay uh, maybe we should try to avoid that but I, yeah. I, I don't think it's i don't i don't know of any law that would forbid it perfect so only we, we philosophers don't believe in it yeah, that's but fine. That's, no, <laughs> that's it. Perf very good. It's Thanks. your problem. Yeah, I have. A, no, no, I'm optimistic, you know. I, I'm not afraid about the f uh, future of uh, humanity from this, yeah, yeah. From this point. Yeah. You know. yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's uh, more a joke. Uh, but, you know, when uh, talking about uh, sustainability, you, you didn't 
touch the term fitness, you know. So we, we go to fitness, some of us, you know, for yeah, yeah, strengthening yeah. our body. I mean, fitness has a very wide uh, different specters of connotations. Anyway, fitness, as I understand uh, and I like uh, from evolutionary point of view, is uh, is the question uh, how does uh, the next step in evolution happens and i i found out this term uh, adjacent, adjacent possible in the fitness le landscape you know mm -hmm. uh, which serves me uh, you know as a mental model how to picture myself how things are evolving basically we don't understand anything where we are. We don't see the future. And we try, we try an error, an error, yeah. as a matter of fact. So <coughs> let's talk about fitness first fitness. and then fitness landscapes. Okay. okay. Those are two, yeah, two, 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 two different concepts. Of course, they are connected. Uh, so, so fitness is actually a quite uh, a difficult pro uh, concept in, in biology. Um, and it's, it has its sort of its, its limits that are often not uh, uh, observed. So technically, fin a fitness is just a measure of how likely a particular individual with its, its genes is able to compete against other individuals in the same species, mm -hmm. right? So, so fitness is, is strictly spoken only a, a measure that uh, ranks individuals or genotypes and so on uh, in competition with other members of the same population, okay. right? Which means that, you know, we cannot speak of fitness between species, right? As a, because, you know, a bacterium is not more or less fit than I am because we are not actually competing with each other okay. as members of the same population. They are different populations and uh, it's not possible to say that, you know, bacteria are less uh, successful than we are. In, to the contrary, you know, most of the biomass is microorganisms and they are very good in what they are doing while we are very good in what we are doing. So you can actually not compare, um, if you want, strategies across um, the set of indi individuals that uh, compete with each other, mm -hmm. right? And so that's often not observed in, in sort of the intuitive talk about fitness, in ecological fitness. You know, one species can drive another uh, species uh, into that's extinction, yes. but that's not a uh, but that's a different kind of a problem. It's not uh, described by fitness. Mm -hmm. Now, fitness landscapes is an is an interesting concept because it also uh, takes into account what uh, an organism can do in order to change itself. Right. So, a fitness landscape is a is a set of possibilities. And uh, adjacency means that, it's, uh, that you can uh, have a mutation that turns your phenotype into the phenotype of something else. And there, you know, adjacency means that you know, for any organism, there's only a limited set of possibilities to change. And they are quite different for different types of organisms. So when I, you know, if a, if a, if a primate uh, uh, mutates, uh, you know, uh, he or she has the possibility of getting larger, you know, getting longer uh, limbs or so on. But uh, we don't have uh, the ability to increase the uh, rate at which we breathe underwater, right? Because we just don't have the starting point yeah, the starting to be there, right? Um, and so, so um, uh, adjacency reflects the fact that uh, organisms can only uh, evolve in certain directions that is determined by what they have inherited from their ancestors. Yeah. Um, and, and therefore, uh, and then on top of that is the fitness. It says, you know, if you mutate in a, bit, uh, in a particular direction, is this better than you are? Can this sort of replace the kind of organism that you are, right? Uh, so this is the combination of variational opportunities okay. and, uh, and performance consequences, if you want. Um, and, and in that respect, it's... Yeah, uh, it's it, you know, it's, it's so neat. Uh, it's so neat for biologists, you know, to say this, you know. Uh, anyway, I mean, the, the, what's the issue all the time on the table, and we've discussed this this, this morning, uh, is, uh, you know, that 
humans are uh, humans evolved uh, as every species more or less you know so also our culture evolves you know so the question here is uh, how to if the culture evolves then uh, with an analogy one can say that also the culture cannot evolve otherwise as a just and possible step probably, out of probably, out of probably. out of you know right but you know on the other side we see all the time this this challenge you know that we pose ourselves culturally some f distant visions mm -hmm. you know how would a biologist see this you know uh, relationship between this, biology this, yeah. and and you know and and this struggle you know that we have a vision you know of i don't know whatever uh, uh, net zero future uh, of humanity or uh, you know you 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 find this utopic ideas all all the time that are governing our does something like that happens in biosphere? Okay, so <clears throat> maybe let's start with a with a paraphrase of uh, Karl Clausewitz and say uh, culture is the continuation of biology with by other means. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so there is no real, you know, uh, there is no, no no real uh, distinction, exactly. and you know, cultures also. Uh, feeds back onto uh, biological evolution, as we know, because you know the way how we live determines what kind of genes can survive in the communities that we are. I mean, the best um, uh, example is the uh, ev uh, evolution of tolerance for lactose in, in adults, right? So, once we have cattle and, and dependent on, on on milk for nutrition. It was uh, distinctly disadvantageous to not being able to to digest that, which means that in most uh, uh, populations that derive from cattle herders, this allele is is a minority. It still exists as a variant, and is usually seen as a you know a, a disease. A disease. Um, uh, but uh, but in fact, it's just an ancestral you know state that became disadvanta disadvantageous in the a uh, cultural context that uh, you know arose with uh, cultural evolution happening on top of of the evolu of biological evolution and then feeding back into in, into it. Um, but of course, we have to um, take into account if we want to see how culture feeds back into uh, biology uh, that it can only happen if the culture changes the chances of reproduction among individuals. It's not just by having ideas yeah. that in itself will not change our, uh, our genotypes, our, our biology. Um, epigenetic effects notwithstanding, but you know, in the standard model, um, uh, uh, culture only matters for biological evolution if uh, it uh, changes the fitness of individuals in the com in the community right but uh, basically you know uh, is there any other concept of reproduction than reproduction <laughs> okay <laughs> you know that's a hard one. I, I mean uh, reproduction <laughs> is part of fitness i mean <coughs> Fitness is, is the consequence of reproduction yeah, among okay. and, survival yeah, and survival and being able to yeah, find yeah, a mate yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and so on. Right? Yeah. There's a complex process uh, that then ends up into a higher or lower fitness for the variants that we carry in our genomes. Right? Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, if okay. I can... So I, I, I did not forget your actual question. Yes. I tried to avoid it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason is, I mean, <coughs> you could also make an argument that uh, at least, you know, more complex organisms have uh, desires and wants and, you know, ideas of what they 
like to do, right? I mean, you only need to be the, uh, the owner of a dog in order to know that they have desires and <laughs> ideas <laughs> of what is going to happen in the next five minutes. Um, the question of how and in what way that changes the dynamic of the evolutionary process is still a pretty open question. So the whole idea that we can actually talk about um, or talk in biology of agents and what role agents play in the evolutionary uh, uh, process um, is still a very open one. And it, you know, I, I hate to make to, to create the, cre uh, the, the impression that we have a definite answer. Um, so I think that is a good question, but we don't have an answer. You don't have an answer. Why did you come here then? Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> the, the Ljubljana is beautiful. <laughs> <and> Ljubljana <laughs> is beautiful. Yeah, because the, the, we touched, uh, we touched, the, uh, but, but beho be let's go first to, to clarify certain, you know, um, uh, points in this map that we are trying to, to draw now. Uh, let's go back to innovation. Okay. Yes, because it's, it's I mean, uh, let's say m mutation is a kind of innovation that either fails or not, sometimes. But but that would be a rather sort of short, short, yeah. right, or flattened, a flattened, uh, a flattened uh, notion of, of, yeah. of innovation. Anyway, the, the, there is innovation definitely, you know, in evolution, you know, right. and and uh, you, you know, as a philosopher, you know, I I hate and I know that science hates analogies mm -hmm. because analogy tells you nothing; it's just a mental concept that it's fine. It helps, but it doesn't prove anything. So you know, homology is something different. Mm. Could you, could you? Let, 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 let me start with innovation. Okay, let's so start with innovation. And so, and so, so you already pointed out that you know, uh, you know, in the in the broadest sense, any kind of change, let's say a single mutation and nucleotide substitution, could be seen as a, something new, but it's really a, an, an a rather uninteresting. Uh, notion of innovation that doesn't actually capture what you know you probably want to think about in the social sciences and philosophy, but also in biology. S but the way to explain what uh, innovation can mean in biology, we can come back to this uh, idea of uh, a change adjacent uh, opportunity, yes. right? Um, <coughs> so, so I, the way I think about innovation, like in this book here is that um, there are different kinds of uh, evolutionary um, changes, actually three classes, right? The one is adaptation, you small changes, increases fitness and we go, you know. Um, <coughs> then uh, the speciation, different, uh, arising different species, sort of uh, separating gene pools, which, you know, took a long time for uh, biologists to understand is a fundamentally different kind of process uh -huh. than adaptation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, I'm arguing that innovation is a third kind and that is distinguished from the other two by evolutionary changes that uh, change the, the, the spectrum of opportunities, right? So, <coughs> so if I'm what I am, you know, a, a tetrapod, uh, you know, being on, on, on the earth and, you know, what I can do is, you know, run faster uh, and so on and, 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 and what to hide or eat other uh, uh, foodstuffs and, and so on in order to ad adapt to my environment. Now, an innovation is uh, any evolutionary biological change that uh, you, you could say changes the rules of adaptation, sort of once I, I I acquire, however that works, the ability to fly, now the opportunities for adaptation are completely different. different. Like the, the game of, of sustaining yourself in the population now follows different rules. So basically, uh, to me, also in, in biology, innovations are those changes that uh, change the, uh, uh, the, the, the adjacent or the the, the opportunities, opportunities for, for, for the opportunity landscape mm -hmm. 
for a particular species, for an organism, and so on. Mm -hmm. And and if you think about it that way, probably uh, you could find parallels also in, in the social uh, uh, realm, where you know, you know, innovations that matter are the ones where you know the the way how you are successful in a community changes fundamentally, right? And um, and so I, I think there is a it, it is possible to distinguish sort of normal um, uh, optimization, normal um, uh, accommodation of, 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 of circumstances and innovations, which are you know, cases where the, 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 the rule book changes. Rule book changes. Isn't that very similar to Thomas Kuhn right. differentiation between evolution no, and science. revolution? And, and but basically, uh, revolution is just evolution that changes the landscape. Well, it, it changes the, 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 the rules of further yeah, yeah. normal mm -hmm. evolution, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I think, and, and, and for, for, for the biologist, it's, it's important to understand that it's, it's really a, a different kind of biological changes that allow these this, uh, this innovations in that sense. Um, and, and we are really you know, only at the beginning of understanding how that works and how it is different but from... Let's suppose it, it is like that. I mean, it, it, I mean it's always I, in science. It, so it must be that. Way. Yeah, it's always in science. You know, you see something and then it takes time, you know, to really right. solidify the, right. the, 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 the matter that you are talking about. Uh, but let's say it, 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 it is like that. So, so basically, also in cult cultural revolutions, which are taking place, I mean, let's say industrial revolution, uh, all, all revolutions that we are talking and also minor changed uh, mm -hmm. the landscape, the opportunities. And, uh, you know, the, the, the question, that pops up again, you know, and I'm provoking. Why I'm provoking? Because I'm, uh, uh, I... We know each other. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's my job, and, but also I cannot, I would like to find someone that would say no, you know. Okay, but okay. basically, you know, if you, you talked about a little bit how you don't understand, I mean, we know we are here, you know, but we don't know how we came Really, I mean, we know uh, by traces, you know, but we don't know really what happened in that very moment that the landscape changed, you know. How come that industrial revolution came, you know? Was there a very brilliant mind, I'm, I'm joking, you know, who, who, who said, okay, now, you know, we have to do it differently. I mean, the, the most, parsimonious way of thinking about that would be that uh, probably these innovations both in biology as well in, in, in culture probably uh, that's not my field but you know I'm just saying um, uh, I'm just talking I'm not saying anything <laughs> um, uh, come about by a confluence of independent uh, development that uh, if you want to use analogical language sort of start resonating with each other right sort of conservation and development of knowledge and, uh, and technological uh, possibilities, exploration, and, and that comes together to create something, a dynamic that transforms the way how uh, societies reproduce, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I think a lot of it is, is really coincidence of, um, of, of affordances. Uh -huh. that come together uh, uh, historically uh, uh, coincidental. But once they come into con contact with each other, they produce a process uh, that sort of fixes you in a particular direction, right? Because the, the dynamic is so strong uh, that it will not, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to get off the, off the rail again. Um, so, so that's in, in a broad, sense the way how I think about it. Okay, and uh, I, I think it doesn't make sense to go further to homology or could homology as a concept? Well, I mean, means? homology is, is sort of the, the, the mirror image of innovation. Yeah. 
because homology uh, uh, describes all the inventory of parts and processes that an organism has and is sharing with similar organisms, mm -hmm. related organisms. And, uh, and, 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 and innovation is exactly the origin of a process or a, a, a body part uh, that is not homologous with anything before. Okay. So it, it, it is a logical uh, uh, mirror image of, 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 of innovation. And, and also, you know, the, the set of homologa, the set of, you know, fixed uh, uh, features that an organism has also defines the <laughs> opportunity landscape that it has for, uh, for, for adaptation, right? So mm -hmm. if I have a wing, I can do something else. Uh, if I don't have wings, if I have hoofs, I can run faster and, and things like that. So these, yeah. Yeah. these are sort of connected uh, concepts that are uh, complementary to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, I I would say for nature, it's it's very easy to understand adjacent possible because it doesn't understand. It it just goes, you know. But you know, we humans are you know we speculate, you know we see something that could happen and but it might be even practically impossible you know to come right. to that point you know right. so but in, and so it is it's, it's just one of the ingredients that potentially if interacting with other affordances that arise that could lead to uh, what what intuitively you would call an, an, an innovation yeah. Okay. So I mean, let let's go back. Uh, it's all all the time around this innovation, and uh, we are talking about. But let's go deeper into into the subject. That is, uh, how to say, uh, interesting uh, for me, and I believe for everybody. You know, when I called. Uh, Matthias Kuntner, who is here tonight with us, yes, uh, no, he is he is a biologist, evolutionary biologist on uh, National Institute of Biology. I didn't find many who would work in this field, so I was very happy to co talk with him, and I heard that. Uh, that you are, uh, please, uh, Matthias, come closer. That you are, uh, you are, uh, you are. Uh, you will explain better, but let me try. You know, I'm, I'm a student, so I have to to learn. <laughs> uh, so you are studying uh, sexual re reproduction in, in, in insects. Um. Should I use yes, yes, mic? yes, yes, please. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you for calling me up. Uh, I'm not sure I can contribute that much to, to this debate. It's been going great. I, I didn't understand <laughs> the questions, but I was... Until now. But I was, I've been following your, your uh, reasoning, and, and that's really biologically sound, and, and I have to agree with, with a lot that I've heard. Thank you. Um, I just study spiders and biodiversity. Spiders yeah. and biodiversity. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I can tell you. No, no, but you know, I, uh, don't be surprised, you know. But uh, I asked you, oh, yeah, spiders, biodiversity, and sexual reproduction, you know. So uh, could I ask you, you know, uh, about uh, sex differentiation in, in spiders, you know? You said, yes, we have two sexes. And then you said, but I, I wouldn't like to talk about that much. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> I know it's Did not I fair. Say that? <laughs> I, I, I warned you. <laughs> um, maybe if I said I, that. I, I, I back you up. It's, it's probably because um, in Slovenia, our, our debates are usually not along the lines of what we have tonight. So I welcome this. But. Um, Many times, uh, people coming from social scientists don't understand us biologists because 
you know, obviously there are two sexes in spiders, as there are in humans and, and many, many other species, though of course not all. There are, there are asexual organisms. But, but anyway, so, so many times we talk about very clear uh, gender roles in biology or definition of sexes or even genetics of sex. And, and people come and say, oh, wait, uh, we, our um, society thinks uh, different. different, you know, there are, there are gen you know, you, you define your own gender. In, in biology, this is not really so, right? So that's maybe, that was my reluctance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I, I do study spider sex um, from the point of view of whether or not s sexual conflict that we detect drives the evolution of other traits. Um, and that relates a little bit to key innovations that, that my colleague has, has uh, been mentioning. Um, so, um, so yeah, so if we stick to spider sex, there's, um, most people know about sexual cannibalism in spiders where a female will control uh, the duration and the events of mating by potentially cannibalizing her mate. And that happens all the time, and it happens more in some species and less in, in, in others, and it happens more in some contexts in those species that do cannibalize, and so on. So we study the occurrences of these, um, let's say, adaptations uh, that then uh, tend to trigger new and new counter-adaptations in the other sex. And then the result, in, in my view, is a sort of an arms race where one sex comes up with a new key trait or behavior um, and then the other uh, counter adapts by evolving something new like um, you know we keep discovering s some peculiar male um, adaptations to to sexual cannibalism such as uh, uh, catapulting away from a mating ritual or uh, gently um, wrapping the female in silk, thereby um, there, no, eliciting both chemicals and tactile signals to calm her down. Um, or, you know, sometimes it, it, some of these adaptations uh, go um, beyond what, what I'm trying to say. But, but I guess so. Yeah, I, I do study key innovations. So basic. Uh, so you know. The, I'm not sure if I answered any of, no, of no, your no, questions. No, <laughs> no, it's it's uh, you know the you know the issue issue the, the, the for 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 our community that is not technically uh, from studying biology, apart from few of you, uh, is, you know, how could you these um, findings from other animals transfer to humans? You cannot directly, I'm quite sure, you know. But, you know, basically, as I know, you, you find similar traits also in other species. So you are not, I mean, you, you are specialized in, in spiders, you know, but, you know, different types of, of, uh, of uh, sexual conflict appears everywhere, also with humans. So basically, oh, oh, you know, all, all the time is the question, uh, right. you know, how, how can we... Generalize. Genera not right. really generalize. Right, right, right. You, what you want to say is projectability. So Project projecting something with, you know, uh, research in one context yes. can be useful or applicable in other contexts, right? So this is what in philosophy of science is called projectability. And, you know, I, I, I think you can... You can expect it if one phenomenon can be identified as the result of a particular formal principle. Like, you know, the uh, sexual conflict comes because you have different roles and the uh, uh, evolutionary success of one uh, sex versus the other depends on what the other one is doing. And then uh, you are in, the, in an area that is uh, captured by 
broadly speaking, game theory. Mm -hmm. And game theory applies to any kind of situation that has these structural pro pro uh, properties, right? It can be applied to, uh, to you know, to economic uh, situations, to military conflicts, to uh, uh, you know, whenever the success of one party depends on what the other party is doing, mm -hmm. right? And then you know, fitness is not a, a, a fixed property anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a, 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 a property of that individual or a particular genotype, but it is the property of a particular genotype in a particular context, and the context is always changing. That, that's right. exactly, and the, 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 that, uh, how to say, somehow uh, baffles me. It, namely, you know, okay, game theory, perfect, you know. Uh, uh, and prison, prisoner dilemma and things like that. Very nice, you know, but th th all those situations are, how to say, very narrowed down. They are two, two individuals or three or blah, blah, blah. But basically, when we are talking about environment, you know, there are a zillion of, of right. triggers that, that we either compete or take in or it's not, you know, just, you know, I mean, what you're describing is, is, is the, uh, and the problem of any kind of reductive science, right? So exactly. we, in order to do science properly, uh, you, pro you want to define the problem you want to solve, which means re reduce complexity, forget about all kinds, all kind, and then really understand deeply a, f a particular, you know, relatively narrowly defined. But um, with that, you forget everything that is important. Right, but it is something like you know you we understand you know uh, uh, mechanics right of billiard balls right, yes, yeah. and uh, and in principle we hope that what we understand there also applies to the atmosphere, right, yeah. or the weather, but the problem there is of course it's much more complex. There's much more uh, variables that then we can measure or know about. Uh, and then it's it's a it's it's an empirical question how much we can actually project what we learn from the simple cases into the, into the into and if it's not then you know we have to find ways of actually integrating the more complex situation into our understanding. So it, it's an iterative process. I mean we always try to you know get it as deep understanding as possible in a simple case and then hope or bet that we can learn something for more, uh, you know, more lifelike uh, situations. But that's an empirical question. Does it work or doesn't it work? And very often it doesn't work, which means we have to learn more. But you right? have to accept it doesn't work. You exactly. Know. It's, right, it's right. But it, you cannot know until you try uh, yeah, to project. Yeah. I think uh, biologists, we often wander in the dark looking for some sort of rules or laws. Um, and most of the times we think we found one and, and then yeah. You know, obviously, but, but, with millions and millions of organisms, uh, things take <laughs> very different and, pathways. And, and the reason why that is so is because biology is rife with innovations. Mm -hmm. They change the rules of the game, mm -hmm. and therefore, uh, you know, regularities or laws or whatever you uh, are, mm -hmm. very often limited to parts of biodiversity that share fundamental, uh, you know rules of, of, of construction, I mean homologies, mm -hmm. and that is sort of defines the, the, the first level of possible projectability, right? So, so biologists, you know, have the main problem that we are dealing with a phenomenon that always changes the rules on us. But, you know, but, you know, the, 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 uh, this is exactly something that I miss in social sciences. Th that's the reason why I'm studying this, as a matter of fact. Yeah, but you know. there it should be opposite. Well, well, it, the it, same it, 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 it is not, I can say so. Okay. I, yeah. uh, take, take, it, your take, take it for granted. If there is, somebody opposes me, raise your hand, I don't we, see we you. We will <laughs> see you. <laughs> I don't see you, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, 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 and this is exactly one of points that I think that the discussions like this should be important because we have to apply to project, not, not in that sense 
you know, those uh, findings that, that uh, I, I mean, those philo that philosophy. And this, I, 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 I will thank you. Okay. And I will ask now, because, you know, you mentioned philosophy of science. Uh, and uh, Michaela Paulicio uh, just t told me today uh, that, that uh, something that is not, uh, and then I'll ask you another question, of course. Uh, <laughs> that uh, it is not utopic, uh, the philosophy of science, and that it, it's still, how to say, it's, it, it's part of your uh, job. Sure. Sure. Uh, and that, that was, yeah. I must say, a surprise uh, for me. How, how, how it's a little bit surprised for me, a surprise to you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, so. again, I, mean, I, I, I yeah. don't want to yes. say that yeah. I know everything. No, no. no. Uh, but so, so yes, the philosophy of science is is actually um, um, kind of uh, involved with 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 scientists all the time, and there are there are huge institutes, uh, and they are involved also in most of our projects, especially when the projects are trying to tackle some some more innovative, more you know um, marginal parts where a lot is going on, where ideas are. Are still being produced. Just um, we just recently had a, a one-year-long workshop in 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 Oslo on evolvability. Uh, that at least to 25 percent was was uh, involving philosophers of biology. Right. But so uh, it's, it's 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 very. I, 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 you know, sorry. It's very simple answer. I just wanted to be the answer to be recorded, you know. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so. All right. Yes, absolutely. So it, 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 it has nothing to do, uh, uh, not, not much to do with this, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, absolutely. It, it has to do. Because, uh, uh, okay, let's go back to the trigger. And that's it. The influence of gene, uh, of memes or culture, forget about memes, that's mm. another topic, but okay, uh, on, on genes, so on genomes, on, on, on further adaptability of our phenotypes and things like that. And, you know, I would provoke here, and you, ha you have an experience from a couple of months ago or what, you told me, so I, I, I will provoke, you know, if social constructivism regarding 80 or I don't know how many genders is going to win, that then it will influence our genome and perhaps we won't have two sexes anymore, but more of them. This is, this is a short answer. The short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, this, this is, I mean, this is the closest that I could get. Namely, right. it, 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 it's a serious question. I mean, you said that, sure. that, that, yeah. that uh, also for, uh, I mean, in the history, you found out some cases where, uh, like, uh, like that lactose or uh, things like that, so right. that the culture influenced. Yeah, so, but, so, so to be very clear, um, the, the, we, are, we agree that, that evolution is an interaction between the variation that we produce, the, that organisms, populations produce, and the, the environment, right? Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's one thing. The, the, these ideas, how culture influences um, evolution is that we also produce our own environment, right? Yeah. And that environment feed, feeds back as, again, a selective force uh, that we also help generate back, back on us, causes selective process, right? So, um, so you need variation. And you need you need the okay. the selective process in that. You so you cannot induce that in in, in uh, so for that reason it just 
So you need the answer variation. Is no. <laughs> yeah, you need but variation, and variation comes with sexual reproduction, mainly. Yeah. So so um, so the thing about sex is, we said that that I think that came up before, that the the traits are um, that you have to see them in 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 a context. They are they are defined in a in a certain context, and and biological sex, and this is really about biological sex. Uh, is is about reproduction. It's it's in in human. Uh, there's only one way to do that, and and it's it's the two gametes. There are two, only one combination of those two works, right? But, this is, but as I say, this is only about about really about the the reproductive uh, process. And um, but if we don't reproduce, we are not fit, right? But you said, I mean, on individual level. You know, I'm I'm fit, but I have nothing from my reproduction because I will die anyway. Yeah. But Evolution still, we come to the society. It's about yeah. it's about yeah. population and, and about species. Population. Uh, you know, uh, the process of evolutionary change is one at the level of the population, and the you know, individual doesn't matter mm. in a way, only as it contributes to this. Uh, higher level process. So b basically, we could say if, if, but you said that even this if is questionable, if uh, this, how, how to call it, gender equality, whatever, prevails, then we will not reproduce, then, I mean, but How do you see I mean, this I, I, I think it's really useful to make the distinction between sex in the and, biological sense and, and gender, okay. which has to do with uh, uh, individual uh, choices, behaviors, desires, and so on. Okay. And that is, of course, much more polymorphic and uh, being the pro product of a historical development and its culture. Um, and that, you know, is, that, that is not touched by anything what we say as biologists about uh, biological sex, right? Mm -hmm. and, and also, I mean, what I want to emphasize is that anything that we as biologists says does not devalue right. the life choices of people who have other uh, ways of leading their life, whether it's, it leads to reproduction or not. That's not something we can, uh, uh, we should say anything to and we cannot. Uh, the only thing we can say is, you know, hopefully our society finds ways to make sure that uh, um, that, uh, um, that uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, what I'm, I'm, I'm blocking on the, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, you know, dignity of each individual yeah, is, is conserved, of, regardless of what, right. what their ideas about their agenda are. So these are completely different. I think we should not m mix them up. Mm -hmm. I know that people try to do that, but I think it's n not good for anyone, not for biology, not for uh, people who have their own choices. Right. Right? Yeah. So and this goes for many other categories as well. Mm -hmm. Biology doesn't say anything about the value uh, of, of, of individuals in, that, in, in, the, in the social context. So uh, huh. whether whether you know we are talking about about skin color, we are talking about anything yeah. else. Okay, okay. There's 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 uh, we can we can only say whether there is a difference or not. But that that's not that doesn't imply anything about the 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 human the, the value of the of yeah. the human yeah. in the, the social values, context. Yeah. And it's it's really dangerous to bind these two things together. Uh, it's been done repeatedly, and it's it's also I think not good for biology to then you know get this this uh, backlash of trying to deny the differences that sometimes are pretty obvious, yes. um, and and therefore deny the, the the biology because that's not where we there that's not where we need need you know to 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 make our choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, or maybe we could make our choices. In that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we do anyway. Yes. Uh, yeah. The, the 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 hard question here is that, or the possible issue is that we are all the same, you know. And you are talking about differences. Of course, we are not the same. Yeah. 
Uh, not the uh, same in the same way. <laughs> yeah, in the same way, yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so, but, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to come back uh, to this issue in more positive way, uh, you know, Matthias was afraid of talking about that. I'm, I'm exaggerating, sorry. You, you, you talked about it uh, in the safe environment. <laughs> uh, but you, 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 you had a recent experience with the uh, Austrian newspaper. Yeah, we, we, we did write, write about, uh, about sex and gender and, and basically many of the things that we said right now. And, uh, you know, I... I, I I didn't used to, to to read the commentaries of the of the articles in newspapers because they, that's sometimes not a really nice experience. But in this in this case, I was curious and uh, I was I was surprised how positive it was taken. As as uh, as um, um, we were thanks man, thanked many times for clarification of, uh, of and and also for that you know relief in in separating this, these two levels. Uh, the biological one that I think a lot of people agree with, but become somehow um, um, get into discomfort because of the the, uh, the the pressure and maybe just haven't thought about it that clearly. Great. So so majority of commentaries were were, were actually very positive. positive yes. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. Surprisingly so. Yeah. Thank you. So. Uh, We thought about one hour. We will. Co I don't see anything. <laughs> is there, People are still is, here. Uh, are there? <laughs> A few of them are. Thanks. Thanks. If there are any questions, shout because we don't see, we don't hear. Uh, uh, there are some students of you here yes. tonight. They are. Uh, I'm sure you, you, you have the power to criticize your professors. They do. Absolutely. Yeah, they they do. So if, if, some, if somebody wants to, please do. <laughs> yes, if, if there are any yeah, comments, please. Uh, uh, Doesn't have to be criticism. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> that, that, also that's agree with us. Uh, you know, uh, it's rare enough. <laughs> have talked about and is, is fun to talk about, but coming to a, a different perspective of Seeing the value, um, this is, I'm, no, please, I don't, please, I don't <laughs> um, seeing the value in thinking about the possibilities of what exactly do we mean by sex? And I'm not up here to argue that sex is in different gametes. That is absolutely, there are in, in sexually reproducing species, two different types of gametes. But what I'm, I think there's a really interesting conversation going on about what exactly do we mean by the category of sex and the way that we think about and put organisms into these two categories based on their gametes. And the ways that those two categories fail to really aptly describe the different sources of variation. So when we see different morphotypes associated with those different gametes. So we see uh -huh. individuals that produce sperm that don't fit into a singular category, but that fit into multiple categories because they have different colorations, they have different sizes. Are, how can selection act differently on those different individuals? on those different types of individuals? And how can we think about those in a way that isn't co cohesive with this idea of two disparate categories, whether we call those sexes or sex morphotypes or sex categories. But I think saying that we're only talking about gametes takes us away from all these other things that we're also talking about and that are also really important to think about and that do become part of this conversation. So this, this is, you professionals call this polymorphism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I learned so, something. So, so, <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yes, sure, uh, of course. Uh, so, I mean, that actually um, starts a very important uh, conversation, <coughs> one that is uh, um, not an, not prominent enough in in, in these conversations, um, and and that is uh, the question of whether we talk about sex as categories, you know, male and female as categories. And if we, if a categories, you know, like, you know, numbers, even numbers or, or odd numbers, so they are defined, you know, they have def defined properties and therefore, you know, distinct uh, 
And and in biology, uh, in particular in comparative biology and in in, in uh, evolutionary biology, we never have uh, categories that are so well defined, right? Yes. <coughs> so the only thing we can um, use quasar categories, which we attach names to, are things that play a particular role in particular uh, developmental pro uh, uh, biological processes, right? And uh, and these categories never deny that you know the, the the underlying reality of biology is one of variation. There's much more than you can capture with these things. Mm -hmm. So, if if we talk about sex, it it defines it by a particular biological role and process in reproduction, but that doesn't deny, or it would be, uh, you know, non-biological to deny that there is more variation out there. And at least if you are within the species of, of humans, a lot of that variation is n cannot be sort of slotted into these reproductive functions. It's still real. It's still are individuals, and we have to acknowledge them. And and uh, and you know we have to find ways of uh, make sure that they have a fulfilled life as well. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there are now five or twenty sexes, right? It's it's if well, you if you think about uh, these sexes as uh, functional categories. But right? are, you, are you talking about here about five or six different gametes? Because then, yes, I agree, but or five or six different reproductive modes, ways of investing into reproduction, ways of engaging, like ways of um, uh, paternal, types of different paternal care, uh, uh, parental care, types of different, like you, there are different forms of reproductive investment that can vary between and within the type individuals, be, regardless of the type of gamete they produce, that still has the potential to affect right, those are, next generation behavioral, you know, behavioral right. variants and right. strategies, if you want. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and they have their you know value or are selected against depending on what ecology and so on. Exactly, That's and that, I think it's important to keep in mind that when we that these are that when when we think about the categories of male and female, um, or to think about sexes, how do we account for both this level of um, gametic um, contribution as well as these other contributions in the, d in the types of variation and the, the evolutionary consequences that it isn't, that it is just, uh, you require a sperm and an egg to fuse, right, 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 but right. you can have right. selection on all these different other... Right, right, right. So, so what, yeah. what, what you're saying is that, that, and I completely agree, that in reproductive biology there are different levels of phenotypes that play a role for successful reproduction or unsuccessful reproduction um, that go beyond the you know the the, the you know the, the, the gametic and and genital level right um, and uh, and sort of the trouble really arises by just trying to project it all 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 the way up to you know in the individual behavior um, and we just need to recognize the different levels of biological mm -hmm. reality where you know uh, contributions to reproduction can be more than binary mm, exactly uh, and uh, but that you know, we still yeah. don't mean that, that there are no sexes in this you know more uh, focused no, sense that, 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 right. that so, anisogamy doesn't exist exactly yeah. uh, uh, right. and, so yeah. the, the problem is that biology is complex yeah, yeah. yeah it exists on different right. levels but that, and if we, if we deny that complexity we it, really hurt it, it loses job, right yeah. yes yeah, um, exactly. so thank I, won't, you. I won't take more space no, by no, it thank, I, thank yeah just I think that, that saying no prevents us from having these conversations no. and that these sure. conversations are right. so important right. yeah. that okay. was that was very uh, I mean I, I, I liked it personally and uh, the it brings us back you know to to the main issue that are having also natural sciences at the moment but I find it in in social sciences even more in in different way namely this reductionism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the the idea that we could, you know, classify that we could come the one unifying, you know, theory of everything, one algorithm that would, you know, explain everything and fix. Uh, with, with that, we are back to the topic that you raised at the beginning. It's innovation. It's right? innovation. Because exactly. of innovation, we cannot reduce to simple rules because the rules change fundamentally in 
historical and evolutionary uh, and processes. I just yeah. wanted to to, yeah. to to add so that it doesn't doesn't it sounds a little bit uh, 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 negative. Um, that still means that the our only means to work is still reductionist. It just not we are sh we are just should not forget the 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 context, right? So we, we still have to go in, in into the the the, the depth first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah, yeah. to understand right. something, the question the question is asked yes, afterwards whether it's projectable what, what, or not. Yeah, yeah, whether it's projectable, right. whether uh, what do we do with findings? Right. Right. How do we conceptualize them? Uh, and uh, I mean, the, the the interesting story in relation to this, for me, is in genetics. Uh, it used to be, you know, pictured like, you know, genes are digits, simple, you know, definable, uh, ATGT, uh, you know. Uh, Whatever, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is my blockage. I, I, I'm not, I didn't do a PhD on genetics yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So basically, what what I found interesting, and well, David is not here, is is that that uh, uh, genes are extremely fluid; they don't have really borders. And we are talking now about you explained categorization. You know, it's mm -hmm. you can see it that way, you can see it that way. You know. And also genes are like that. And so this utopia, you know, that with a gene, with a reduction to a gene, we will explain phenotype, it's over. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, it, 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 20 years ago it wasn't like that, or was it? Right, but, but you know, on, on the other hand, the, the ideas like that did lead us somewhere, not where, oh, we, yeah. not where we thought we would, <laughs> we yeah, would yeah, end yeah, up, yeah, but yeah, indeed, yeah, yeah. they did, right? No, no, I don't, yeah. uh, 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 I don't want to challenge right. scientific method. No, no, oh, no. but, but I, I think it's, re it's important to, to um, you know, to st start somewhere to, to start this, somewhere. Yeah. To this, yeah. this uh, fear that, you know, you will not be able to explain everything anyway. Uh, doesn't stop you from starting in that that little point. But basically, you know, for uh, at least for uh, the community that is not so how to say fluent in genetics, it's it's quite an important message. Yeah. You know, I mean that don't rely. You know that now. You know, just give up. Everything is solved. You know, with with uh, genome. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's a kind of impression that it's still. At least in popular media, you know, uh, they are still repeating this. Okay, they, even that stupidity, you know, now they found uh, a, a genome for Alzheimer, or uh, I, I don't know, yeah. yeah, a gene for Alzheimer, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's important to understand, you know, it's, the shorthand is always, you know, the gene is the DNA, it is this molecule yeah. that has this basis, A, T, G, C, and so on, and its sequence, you know, carries meaning. Um, which at the first uh, approximation is interesting, uh, but it's really not uh, reflecting biological reality because DNA is, at, first of all, a relatively inert molecule um, and it becomes a gene only if it's embedded in a cell. In a cell, yes. And, and, uh, and the cell is using it to achieve certain goals, you know, like surviving, digesting, uh, and so on. So, so a gene is actually more the relationship between the DNA molecule and the uh, cellular Plus, context yeah. in which it, it, it exists, right? So this and is meaning called actually epigenetics, what, what you are... In, in a broader sense. In a broader sense, sense, yes. Let's not call it that way. No, no, I mean, yeah. because, you know, there are certain terms that are popping up in... Yeah, I mean... Epigenetics has a very narrow meaning uh -huh. and a broader meaning. What we are talking about is the broader meaning, namely all the processes that live on top of the genetics, right? Epigenetics. Um, uh, uh, so the old meaning, actually going back to the mid uh, 20th century, epigenetics was a anything within which genes are involved, but you know there are other processes 
included. Um, and uh, nowadays, the narrow meaning is any form of uh, chemical modification of the genome itself that then influences the way the DNA can be used or not used. Uh, so there's, there's sort of a duality of, of, of meaning and therefore it's better to avoid it because mm -hmm. it, it <laughs> takes time to explain the differences. Yeah. Well, you know, what, what is, is uh, one, one of takeoffs, you know, from such conversations for those that are not in biology. Uh, there are some managers here, you know, the different kind of uh, academics and uh, things like that is, is that, that uh, avoid, avoid being too fixed, you know. Right, <laughs> right, right. I mean, if, if sustainability is change. Sustainability is change, is variation. And the question is, of course, how to manage sustainability. Uh, and there is no final answer. Well, for the, for the social and you know, organizational level, yeah. you know, uh, I think we as biologists should be modest and, and say we, don't, we, can, we cannot give you advice because it would require domain knowledge that mm -hmm. we don't have, that you, don't that, have. That, that you guys need to uh, bring to bear. Yeah, but, um, but, you know, what we can is to give you a hope that, you know, some views or uh, perspectives may help overcome blockages in, in, in thinking about problems. Yeah, 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 that's, I mean, I knew that somehow, you know, uh, you should go to European Commission, you know, and tell them what is sustainability. <laughs> because now, you know, the, you, many of you know that uh, the directive or, on corporate sustainable reporting is coming out, mm. you know. Mm. That helps. Sorry? <laughs> that will help, <laughs> creating more unsustainable <laughs> uh, reporting. But what is interesting there is that they are, they are uh, forcing companies, you know, to, to define upstream and downstream value chains. Mm -hmm. And if I translate this into biology, is, you know, up, upstream is a food mm -hmm. and downstream is a, yeah. how it's called, sacrament or? <laughs> <laughs> Excrement. <laughs> Excrement, yes, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I mean, it's, but but you know in in, in in biology if we go beyond our this analogy you know <laughs> bacteria actually feed upon each other's secretions right yes so exactly all that uh, so that all circular right. we call yeah. this circular economy you know if you yeah, yeah. didn't hear it yeah yeah so it's circular economy yeah yeah uh, yeah so so uh, I'm sure that those from Brussels won't hear this won't listen to this so we are. Uh, uh, ready for a beer. Ready. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, that, that, so that that was, uh, as a matter of fact, it's always uh, one hour and a half. If if uh, if there are any questions, I think there is one. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Can you please come forward? Come closer. Yeah. yeah. First, I have to apologize myself. I'm, uh, my basic uh, education is economy. So perhaps uh, I will sound uh, strange, but I would like no, just I would like to go to the topic. Uh, what is the progress? Could we? Could you say a few sentences? What is really the definition of the progress? Because I'm asking myself as uh, um, somebody working in the economy, in the business, and now in leadership training and so on, did we really make any progress in, uh, in the, our evolution, let us say? Because uh, if the definition of the prehistoric communities was that the members of the society were feeling safe, protected, and so on and so on, how do we feel today? Do we really made a, did we really make any progress? H how we are now heading in this progress? That's, that's so typical for me, you know. That was the topic of this <laughs> conversation. You, <know? laughs> you forgot about it. 
Thank you. I, dis I distracted you uh, successfully. Thank you. At least, at, at least his yeah. name is Andre, as mine. Yeah. So you know. So so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. I mean, progress has a has a bad reput as a concept uh, a bad reputation in in biology because you know, of course there was uh, is a long history of people thinking about evolution, evolutionary change in terms of progressive processes, you know, goal leading to a goal-oriented. Goal oriented, yeah. goal -oriented, yes. Um, and you know, there's a simple answer, there's a complicated answer. The simple answer is that in biology we don't accept the existence of goals, but I think that, uh, is, uh, you know, that, that they are pre-given goals that you know, evolution would drive towards, you know, making humans or whatever, if, as if that would be a good idea. Um, so, uh, but, but, there's, but there's a phenomenon that, that I think uh, uh, triggers this idea of, of, of progress that is, I think, also very uh, correct. Uh, and that is the fact that, um, that evolutionary processes have sort of this property of sort of self-directing, self right? Getting uh, producing a, 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 a quasi-directability uh, out of itself, right? Because of what we have discussed before about the uh, affordances and innovations that then, you know, move the whole thing in a particular direction. So I think to deny that there is much more structure to evolutionary or historical change than the more radical uh, members of our community want to accept uh, is, is, is not realistic. So there, I think what we see as progress is always post hoc, right? If we think that it's a good idea to have industrialized or in uh, community, then, you know, in retrospect, we, we uh, uh, categorize that as progress, but, um, but it's always in hindsight. Um, right. and, and, uh, and so, you know, I don't think uh, progress in this sort of positive, goal-directed way um, is, is a good way of thinking. It just happens to us. But, you know, it's, it's uh, Georg, Georg Friedrich Hegel, Hegel. who said mm -hmm. the, the, all, the, the all of uh, wisdom always comes late. Right. Or right. something like that. I'm not very good at right. citation. Like Slavo Zizek, he was said in, on which page uh, this... <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, it's hindsight yes it's yeah uh, uh, which means we should construct our next form of progress carefully you know yeah yeah that that's the 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 the, the as, at least as i see as a major challenge of today's society is this uh, idea implanted in heads that you can really construct the future in, in, in a way on... So we had experience with five-year plans before it didn't yes, work Yes, it didn't off. work, yes, yeah, yeah. but that, yeah. I, I, you know, I my hope was, you know, that biologists would uh, spoil this game, but you are not enough persistent, you know, <laughs> you are too modest, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, at least I hope that, uh, uh, Andre, did you? Yes, yes. Sure, okay. thank you. Thanks. Any other, I don't know, questions, suggestions, disagreements? You, you cannot disagree with us, as you, 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 you've already noticed, <laughs> <laughs> but you can add up something. If not, uh, then I will help. Uh, thank you for coming to Ljubljana just for this occasion. Yes. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. A pleasure. I'm sorry David is not here, but yeah, me too. there will be another opportunity if Tomas allows us uh, another session somewhere. Mm. Uh, it definitely, uh, I'm, uh, I was always surprised because, you know, bi humans, we are biological beings and how come that, you know, biology is so, is so pushed aside, mm -hmm. at least 
you know, mm -hmm. from what, uh, what I perceive, you know. Okay, that's... It, it, it's also the fault of many biologists because yeah. they don't want to engage. They don't want to engage, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's always like that, yes. But basically, I hope that uh, that part of the audience that, w that is not a part of biological sphere uh, got a hint uh, about important issues that, that link together mm. social sciences and things that we are all thinking about, you know, how to survive, you know, what are triggers for our success. It doesn't matter what you work, or you're in which business you are, if you are not in business. In any case, we are dealing with this uh, sustainability issues with fitness in the broader sense and things like that. So I really hope that, that uh, uh, some thoughts popped out into your minds as well. It did to mine. So thank you again. And uh, I cannot stop. So <laughs> let's stop. <laughs>